Migration is innate in human beings. It's inextricably our human story. So it makes no more sense to put up barriers against human beings moving around our globe than it would to stop cells moving around our body. And it certainly makes no economic sense. Barriers to the movements of workers are a massive barrier to improving humankind's economic well-being. Surely we should be maximising human potential and not wasting human resources. Life is short and for many people it's fragile and it's poor. So if human beings have the opportunity to do the best for themselves, everyone benefits. We start a cycle that leads to better outcomes for poor places as well as rich ones. And we've made so much progress in past decades with free trade in goods and services that's moved many people out of poverty. Free movement of workers would do the same. The Center for Global Development in Washington, D.C., the economist Michael Clemens there, has estimated the impact of free movement of workers at trillions of dollars, even as much as doubling GDP. I don't know how many trillions of dollars it's worth. I don't know the exact economic impact. But it's clear that labor mobility will do vastly more for world growth than removing barriers to trade. And we know that markets do a pretty good job. If you want to let the state meddle in free markets, then you need very strong evidence indeed, strong evidence and good reasons to stop workers moving freely and wasting so much economic and human potential. If we replace the word global with the word European, I'd be arguing on the other side of this proposition, uh, or if we remove the word free, or, or perhaps particularly if we added the phrase gradually as the economies of the world converge, I'd be happy to sign up to it. Uh, but as the motion stands and as I, see, as I read it, it's saying we should do it now. I've no hesitation in saying I think it's really deeply reckless. And I think it must be obvious why. There's such stark disparities between the economies of the world, particularly between the global south and the global north, that if we were to throw open the borders now, we would have a massive destabilizing movements of people, which the economies into which people were moving wouldn't be able to cope with. And I think we definitely have, quite quickly, uh, economic and social unrest and chaos, and not least for those migrants. They'd all be acting rationally themselves, because IPPR research and others have shown that you benefit massively if you're moving from a developing country to a developed country in terms of your ability to earn added income. But the sum of all of those individually rational decisions would spell, I think, uh, economic disaster. And I think what we'd find in actual fact is if you tried it as an experiment, you'd qu very, very quickly, you'd throw open the borders, and then after a few days, probably, or weeks, you'd shut them again, and, th and actually progress, steady progress towards a free world would be put back quite a long way. So I would say, turn the preposition on its head. I think we need more global recovery and more convergence of economies, then we can have free movement of workers. The eminent uh, economist John Kenneth Galbraith is the one who said that migration is humankind's oldest action against poverty. It benefits the countries they arrive at, it benefits the countries they send, and it benefits them. And the debate that we're having, actually, uh, in Britain and in Europe about migration is, I would call that rounding errors in that bro broad equation. So that fundamentally has been true. Uh, Africa is where humankind actually found its birth and then migrated out of Africa. So it's been with us for a very long time. And it will stay with us for a very long time. And the uh, talking of Africa... Let's remember that the vast majority of African migrants stay in Africa. And their problem is that their governments place too many restrictions on their ability to maximize their gains from moving. And if the, the, the worst thing is, actually, that African governments make it harder for Africans to move than non-Africans. So if you're British or you're Australian or you're Canadian, you can move around Africa much more easily than the average African. So that is actually really the obstacle to the realization of the global recovery. And that's what we need to address. It's the implementation of free movement that's needed.